Let's see Zebra here. I don't know if you can see me. You probably can't see my face. It's kind of at a weird angle, but I had to do this. So you can see everything that I'm cooking here. Um, I'm going to be making a pork Jamaican dish. It is completely gluten-free and dairy-free. Um, typically, when I worked in the restaurant industry, I get a lot of requests for allergy-friendly dishes, and this is going to be kind of like a start on my cooking series about allergy-friendly dishes. I have a lot of food allergies. My whole family has a lot of food allergies, and so um, this is kind of what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to make um, this first dish with the Instapot. So um, I also get a lot of requests um, for things to do with the Instapot. And I use um, this Instapot. It's a little beat up because I used this Instapot in my truck when I was uh, driving the uh, semi truck. So um, excuse the scratches and the, the beat up bangs and the nicks. But um, also there was some truck drivers that were interested in um, Instapot friendly dishes as well. So I tried to keep the spices pretty minimal, um, things that you could easily find at Walmart. Um, although I did use some, um, some salts that were a little bit more unique, um, but you don't have to use these. I just thought they were pretty cool. I um, I found these at my local market at Yolks. Um, so if you do have a Yolks, these were pretty neat to find. They were made in Washington. Um, they were by a brand called Saltworks. And the, um, so it's, uh, the website is www.seasalt.com. So you can order these on the, their website. Uh, they are awesome. I've used a lot of <laughs> their stuff. I have a whole stack. Um, the two I will be using today is their lime fresco and their ghost pepper. Some of my favorite. I do also have their Hawaiian sea salt, um, their applewood smoked sea salt, which is amazing for doing my barbecue sauce. I do a sugar-free barbecue sauce recipe because I am diabetic and so is my husband. I have a black lava sea salt from their company. I have a habanero heat uh, sea salt which is not as spicy as our ghost pepper which is also amazing. And I also have a lemon twist. I am out of their um, vanilla sea salt. Um, I typically don't use their vanilla because I am allergic to vanilla so um, I will use it in baking for the holidays for the rest of the family, though, uh, because the rest of my family is not allergic to vanilla, just I am. Okay, so to start off with, I did make um, my spice mixture. I already have it kind of together. Um, I kind of pre-made it here. But basically what I did is I took um, about four uh, good-sized tablespoons of hot curry powder you can use regular curry powder if you do not like the heat. Um, it doesn't have to be by this brand. It can be by any brand. Uh, just go to your local uh, supermarket and just pick out any curry powder that you like. Um, I personally like this uh, curry powder. If you just notice this jiggle, it was my blind pug on the floor. Um, but I personally like this curry powder. It does not have any garlic um, and it does not also have... Um, any uh, ginger in it. I'm also allergic to ginger too. Um, so I just prefer this one because I'm allergic to garlic. So, and so is the rest of my family. So this is what I will be using in this recipe today. Um, I use ground uh, coriander because um, in this recipe, I typically uh, use cilantro. Um, I chop up cilantro towards the end and throw it in. But I did not have any cilantro today, so I just used about half of a teaspoon worth of coriander in the um, the spices that I, I threw in that I'm going to kind of just rub the pork with before I saute it. And so you can pick this up at any supermarket as well. 
And then uh, allspice, be careful with allspice, it is very pungent. Um, you can get this anywhere. Uh, I typically buy these in bulk uh, just to make it cheaper. So I used about half of a teaspoon. Like I said, be careful with this stuff, it's very potent. And then I use some crushed chili powder. I like this stuff really spicy and you can make it as spicy as you would like it. So if you want it spicier, you can use more. If you don't like spice, you can omit it. The next thing I use is ginger. Uh, the rest of my family is gonna be eating it, uh, not just me. So I did go ahead and put some ginger in it. I'm not extremely allergic to ginger. I can have it about once a week. Um, so, uh, I used about a teaspoon of ginger. You can use more ginger, you can use less. Um, typically my recipes is just kind of to taste. So if it's not a hard and fast thing with cooking, I kind of like to experiment. So, uh, with baking, you can't really do that with cooking. I like to be kind of like a scientist. So, um, I like things to, I like to be creative. So I typically don't use recipes. I like to just kind of make things up. I'm just giving you kind of like a guideline in case you're new to starting off in the kitchen or you just want some ideas. That's kind of what I did. So the onion powder, I haven't added this in yet. I'm going to now, I'm going to use about two tablespoons of onion powder. So I haven't added this in, I'm going to now. Um, I typically use a lot of onion powder in cooking because we can't have garlic, so onion powder is a nice thing to flavor things up. It's nice and strong. If you don't like the taste of onions, um, you can go lighter or you can omit it. Um, the ginger juice. Uh, ginger juice is nice if uh, you're in a truck and you can't get fresh ginger on the road. You can find typically ginger juice in like the organic section and it keeps really nicely as opposed to ginger root. So um, it's really nice to have, uh, especially if you're a truck driver or an RVer, it's really nice to have ginger juice. It's really nice and potent. Um, I just went ahead and just did a quick splash in here, probably like half a teaspoon. It has this really nice fresh flavor. It has a nice bite as opposed to like the ground ginger where it doesn't have that nice fresh flavor. I really like ginger juice. One thing to note about ginger juice, it does settle in the bottom. So make sure when you use it, give it a good shake. It really needs it because like I said, it settles on the bottom and you want that nice uh, ginger stuff to, to get all through it before you add it to anything. And I really like this stuff for sauces and salad dressing and stir fries. It's really nice to have in the truck and you don't need a whole lot to add so um and also i also added vegetable base this is also a great thing uh to keep around um especially if you're a truck driver or um an rv or a camper um or just someone at home that doesn't have a lot of time uh to do stocks and stuff i don't have a lot of time because um, i'm always in pain so i don't typically have time to make stocks and so I keep vegetable base check the vegetable base if you have a lot of food allergies um, most things they have uh, wheat flour um, sometimes they even throw in dairy or if you're allergic to soy or corn or just check the back um, if you're allergic to garlic like I am they almost always have garlic in it so check the back on these um, also, if you're trying to stay away from salt, don't even bother then. Um, me though, I have um, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, so I need a lot of salt, um, which is great for me because um, any of these bases have high sodium. So, uh, but what I was saying about bases is a great thing um, to impart a lot of flavor in things. Um, you just need usually like a tablespoon or two in any of your sauces or any of your dishes, and it's, it's really great. Um, I, I like to throw it in my rices. I like to throw it really in any of my dishes or sauces. It's, it's great. So I also threw in about a tablespoon and a half. Um, it's also great in marinades too. 
Uh, I usually keep a vegetable base around. I'll keep a, um, a beef base and a chicken base. Um, sometimes I'll even have a ham base around. So um, I'll give this a good stir. Um, I'm also going to add probably a little bit of coconut oil to this. That's one thing I didn't um, add to uh, the screenshot when I did this in the beginning of what you're going to need. Um, typically I don't add um, like the salt and the pepper or like the oils that you're going to need because that's typically things that you should have around the house, but I probably should have. Um, I typically cook with uh, coconut oil or a uh, vegetable oil, but typically coconut oil because I really like the monounsaturated fats that come from the coconut oil. And it's also dairy free and gluten free. And it's just really healthy for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and add probably about a tablespoon of coconut oil to that, just to loosen up my spice mixture a little bit. And it also gives it a nice flavor. One of my favorite brands of coconut oil is Dr. Bronner's. I will show you the, the container on this. It just kind of has a really good light coconut flavor. It's not even that strong of a coconut flavor. So if you don't like coconut, you might not even taste it. Um, yeah. That's what the bottle looks like. Uh, when you're looking for coconut oils, try to get um, the organic, um, cold-pressed, unrefined. That is the best. Uh, even if it's not organic, look for cold-pressed, unrefined. That's really important. So now I'm just going to try to stir this up. That's the coconut oil is just going to get it to... Um, just come together and so once I cut up the pork then I can rub this on the pork and typically when you make these spice mixtures you're going to want to leave it on the pork for at least about an hour typically I like to leave them on for about two if I can. I mean, you can certainly leave it on longer. When you're working with red meats, like pork or beef, um, or even poultry, uh, like chicken and turkey, you can leave them on overnight if you want. Um, and if you want to vacuum seal it, that just cuts down your marinade time considerably. You can you can really marinate really fast if you got one of those food savers. Sucks out all the air and, and really um, marinate your meat very quickly. Fortunately, I ran out of my food saver bag, so I'm gonna have to pick some up. That's typically how I marinate things. So, all right. So now that I have this all together, I will be, and this is what it's going to look like. It's going to be a pretty thick paste, and that's what you're going to kind of be looking for when you want to rub your meat. So, all right. So now I'm going to be cutting up my pork into about medium dice cubes. just now cutting up the last part of pork and as you see I'm doing like a medium dice and what helps is I didn't thaw it out all the way I left it still partially frozen in the middle so it really helps to cut this into cubes and the knife kind of just glides right through Otherwise, it kind of just makes it really hard to cut. What also makes it easier is before I start ever cutting is 
always sharpen your knife. And if you guys want, I can show you how to sharpen your knife properly. Like I said, I was um, in the food industry for about 10 years. I did graduate, graduate, <laughs> graduate, graduate Western Culinary uh, with Cordon Bleu in uh, 2005, I believe. In fact, that was so long ago. Um, I did receive my associate's degree in culinary arts. So, so if you guys do have any questions on that, please let me know. And so now I have my pork here. It's all cubed up and I'm going to go ahead and put the marinade in. So my study was French cooking. I didn't actually work in any French restaurants. It was not my cup of tea. Um, although I have made a ton of hollandaise sauce in my life. I would make it by the gallon at one of my restaurants. Actually a few gallons at a time. <laughs> especially on Sundays. Um, I prefer international cuisine. So that's, that's really my cup of tea. I do like, I do enjoy baking. And I really got into helping people with allergy cooking and I was also a vegan for about 16 years of my life um, so if you guys need any help um, on ideas um, with recipes or baking or cooking I do have a lot of experience with that um, I also grew up with macrobiotic cooking as well. So I do have a very diverse background. I just love food, <laughs> as you can tell. Fortunately, food doesn't love me. I have uh, gastroparesis pretty severely right now. Um, and also I have problems swallowing and I have pretty bad acid reflux. Um, it's really eating my esophagus pretty severely at this point. I'm not quite sure what they're going to do. Um, I'm not quite sure what they're going to do about my gastroparesis either. Um, I started off over 250 pounds um, in June of this year and I'm already under 200 pounds right now, so, um, and it's not stopping either, so I'm not quite sure, the doctors aren't quite sure what they're going to do with me. My gastroenterologist um, has tried some medications, and <laughs> I'm not quite sure, but I still have hope. good days. I still love to eat. And I still love to cook, so I'll still cook for the rest of my family, and I'll still do these YouTube videos. And Okay, so that's what the pork looks like with the marinade on, and I'm going to go ahead and cover this, pop it in the fridge for a few hours, and let it marinate. Um, let it impart its beautiful flavor on this. It smells awesome. It smells like curry and deliciousness, and this will be amazing. Um, like I said, if you have the time, let it marinate as long as possible with uh, pork and all red meat. It does take a little bit longer, especially if you cut it into bigger chunks. The bigger the chunks, the longer it takes to marinate. So I will go pop this in the fridge, and I will see you in a few hours after this marinates, and I'll see you back. 
Okay, I'm back with the pork here. Now, the first thing um, that you want to do with the Instapot, besides making sure it's plugged in, is knowing your functions here. So, with the pork, um, we're going to want to saute it first. And so, there's a lot of different models. My model is one of the first models, um, but they're all pretty much set up the same. So you're going to want to uh, find your saute feature. And so push your saute feature. And there is going to be a less normal and more. And I like to put it on the more feature. And if you want to adjust it, there's a minus and a plus feature. And you can adjust it right there. So it will say on. And so what we're going to do is you're going to want to add your fat. And like I said, um, I'm adding coconut oil. So I'm putting there coconut oil. And now I'm using a non-stick uh, insert. They normally come with um, the stainless steel. And um, being that I was a truck driver, it was just easier for me to clean the non-stick uh, one. And so I got the non-stick model. Now, sorry if I'm bumping this, but it's kind of hard to hold the camera and do this because I'm sure you guys are going to want to see what I'm doing. So, um, anyways, I got the non-stick model. I believe it's only like 14 or 20 bucks, uh, depending upon which model you have. Um... So I really enjoy the non-stick now. Mine has a few scratches in it, but it really held up over the years. I've had this model for about four years now. I also have the three quart, but it's currently with my husband who is currently still truck driving. So it's really been invaluable. Now, uh, with this Instapot for the saute feature, it does take about, um, four or five minutes to heat up which kind of takes away from your 30 minute saute feature unfortunately but it's okay i mean uh, all you have to do is re-hit the saute feature and you know you have another 30 minutes which is kind of nice but when you're doing roasts or um really anything you really want to brown your meat so okay when you start hearing it uh bubble like that go ahead and throw in your meat Sit you guys down for a second. While I scrape the bowl with all the good stuff. Okay. Now I'm just going to be browning the meat. This looks like, and this is all ground up and delicious. All right, so I went ahead and browned my meat, and then I threw in my onions and bell peppers and potatoes and stirred them all together. Now, I didn't go ahead and brown all the peppers and onions and potatoes because when they cook in the Instapot, you don't want them to get too mushy. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on. Now, if you're just gonna go ahead and just saute everything together, then you can go ahead and um, brown them. But if you're going to actually I use the function to um, pressure cook if you don't want to cook. So when you're lining the lid up, 
I'll show you the little knob. So you'll see the close arrow to close arrow. And that's how it closes and then you just close it. And so now that I have that, you'll see the saute thing will still be on. You can just go ahead and cancel that off because it doesn't, you can leave the lid on for saute, but um, especially when you're driving down the road, um, definitely keep that lid closed. You don't want it to accidentally knock over and then there goes your pot of stuff. Okay, so there's a lot of functions here you can play with. Um, usually when I'm doing stuff like this, I go ahead and go to the, uh, you can either do meat and stew, or I usually go ahead and do manual. And um, I do, um, usually when you're working with uh, pork and stuff like that, I do about like 25 minutes. I like low pressure, it's already partly cooked. So um, there you go, and then you'll hear this beep it will say on and then make sure on the top you'll see this little knob put it all the way over and that's how you'll know um, it's closed when it's all the way to the right now if it's all the way down and to your left that's going to be venting now this little um, silver thing when it goes all the way up that's how you'll know that it's closed off to steam. And when it's all the way down, that's how you'll know it's okay to open the lid and there's no pressure in the system. So make sure when it's done that this little silver thing is all the way down. Do not open this lid till it's all the way down. And when it's done, when the Instapot's done, I will show you too. Um, you can go ahead with a utensil, do not use your fingers because you'll have hot pouring steam on your hand. You can go ahead and um, push this little thing down and this will have hot steam come rushing up. And then this little silver thing will start to go down. But I will show you more um, once this uh, becomes finished. So I will see you more back after Th this finishes. Okay, so the timer went off three minutes ago here. So what I like to do is just grab any utensil here and on the back side you'll see that this little silver thing is still up which means there's still a lot of pressure in the system so do not open this lid whatsoever. So what I like to do for a quicker release is with do not use your hand. Use something long here or you're going to burn yourself. Just turn this nozzle and this will release the steam out of the system and for quicker purposes just hold it right there and as you'll see there'll be a lot of steam releasing. And if you're in a truck, what I like to do is make sure you don't have it underneath the cabinets or things are going to get really wet. Um, or you can use like a paper towel over the top um, or something to kind of collect all the water. So that's really helpful. Um, or otherwise, <laughs> you're going to get a lot of water all over your cabinets. And depending upon what you're cooking, you could have kind of like tomato sauce steam all over your cabinets or um, kind of greasy pork juice or um, just who knows what. Uh, so you don't want to be scrubbing your cabinets all night. So that's just a little word to the wise um, and a little tip is just put something over that nozzle um, and that will just make cleanup a little bit easier. So just keep watching that uh, that little silver thing right there and do not open this lid till that silver thing goes all the way down and you can keep uh, pressing that all the way over to let that steam out. 
to make this go faster. And I will come back as soon as all the steam's out. Like I said, it's already been five minutes, so it, this process probably takes a couple minutes, depending upon if you're on low pressure or high pressure, and I did low pressure. So I will go back in a few minutes when this little silver thing goes all the way down and all the steam and pressure is out of the system. Okay, as you can see, um, the silver thing is all the way down. We're at about nine minutes here. It released about eight minutes in. So you can hear it kind of slow down. So now it is fully safe to open the system up. I will have to say one thing, the Bluetooth Instapot, it's kind of nice because it will show on the phone um, how much pressure is in the Instapot and um, when to open it up and everything. So that is kind of nice, but I kind of like my Instapot. It still works great, so I don't mind. But for a beginner, maybe it's nice to uh, know how much pressure is in there. And um, I guess it's kind of a nice fail safe. So if you are kind of new to the uh, pressure cooking world, that would be nice. Um, so this is what it looks like. Nice and beautiful. And you got some nice beautiful juice to go over your rice here. If you want, you could thicken it up, but you don't necessarily have to. You can see the pork is nice and tender. See, it just falls apart. That's the one nice thing about pressure cooking. Ah, my glass is fogging up, of course, the steam. All right, I can't get you that close, but um, maybe I can show you this far away. Um, everything's cooked perfectly. The potatoes are cooked perfectly. Everything is just beautiful. It's just so beautiful. So I did low pressure steam for 25 minutes. The pork is just fall apart tender. And I did a coconut rice and I will go ahead and plate up a bowl here. It's just lovely. Mm. I can't wait to eat it. My family says it smells amazing and we're gonna be digging in right now, so. That's it, and I can't wait to bring more of this, so please like, comment, share, and if you want more of this, um, please let me know. And this is one sassy zebra. Bye.